Hello and welcome to another Benny video. Uh, it's nice to see you guys. The um, plan today is we're going to go through the lesson that I would have done had I been there. Um, so that will entail doing some notes with you, um, looking at a couple different videos that would have been uh, potentially demonstrations we've done in class, um, and then doing some of the practice problems together uh, that I would have done with you in class as well. So hopefully today will be a, a useful day for you if you can hang with me here. Um, this, this video will probably be a little long because I've got a lot of different video clips I'm planning to show you as we kind of go through the notes and uh, basically those would have been demonstrations that we would have tried to have done uh, in class. Just a couple things before we get started with today's warm-up. Uh, one, you want to make sure you turn in the speed of sound lab. Uh, and two, we have a test next block. So um, that test will include really uh, everything we talked about from pendulums to periods and frequencies to uh, the parts of a wave along with now everything we've done with sound. So calculating the speed of sound, um, using the wave equation, and then anything we learn today. There will be a review sheet that I give you at the end of the block, and the answers to that review sheet are already posted in Google Classroom. And then when we come back together um, on Monday, uh, we can go over any questions you might have um, about the test or sound or any of that kind of good stuff. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, warm-up question here. Um, story goes, on a recent field trip, a student went hiking at Devil's Lake State Park, and at one point, uh, the student named Peter let out a holler, which reflected off a nearby rocky cliff, and was detected uh, as an echo 1.8 seconds later. Determine the distance to the rocky cliff, and assume the speed of sound is 344 meters per second. So uh, I'm going to go to a new slide so I can have some space to do some work here. Um, <clears throat> so the, the, this problem, I, I know we've had some problems with because uh, on a, an AOR a while back, there were a lot of people who are missing this question. This is not actually using the wave equation to solve this problem. It's actually using an equation we learned way back at the beginning of the year, uh, which is the speed equation. And that equation goes something along the lines of speed or s equals distance over time. Um, in this case, the distance is what we're looking for, and we're given the speed of sound, which is 344 meters per second, um, over a time of 1.8 seconds. Okay, so that's basically what we're looking at here. Now, if you go through and you solve for d, or the distance, you multiply 1.8 times 344, you get a distance of 619.2 meters. Now, the, the problem is, is that's not the answer. Uh, because if you think about an echo, how an echo actually works is when you yell, your, your uh, sound wave travels, hits an object, bounces off that object, and then reflects back to you to, to basically be heard in your ear. So this distance represents the distance that the sound wave had to travel from your mouth to the rocky cliff and then back to your ear again. So it's actually two times the distance as to how far away the rocky cliff is. So we're going to actually cut this distance in half. And to do that, I'm going to divide it by two. And so the real answer that you want to give me is 309.6 meters. Um, so again, you got to cut that distance in half or else you don't have the right answer. More than likely, there will be a question something like this on the test next week. Uh, it, it probably won't be exactly like this problem, but the idea will be the same. So just be aware of that, that this is probably something that will be coming down the, uh, coming up on the next test. Okay. Um, so if you're a note taker, grab your notebooks. We're going to go through some notes today. Um, if you're not a note taker, just try your best to pay attention because we are going to learn a lot of um, interesting concepts um, today. So today's notes are called 9.5 Behavior of Sound Waves. And basically, our goal is to A, learn what causes a sound wave to resonate. We're going to continue our discussion about constructive and destructive interference, and in particular with sound waves. Uh, we're going to talk about how beats are formed, what causes dead spots in theaters. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a, a video of something called a Rubens tube, and uh, we're going to learn about the Doppler effect. So a lot of good stuff happening today. Uh, let's not spend any extra time on this. Let's get right to it. So the first thing we want to talk about is something called resonance and natural frequency. 
Uh, a natural frequency, as the name kind of implies, is a frequency at which an object tends to vibrate at. Um, so things have a natural tendency to vibrate at specific frequencies, and that's just that object's natural frequency. Each object has a different natural frequency. When an object starts to vibrate at its natural frequency, it can actually force another object to vibrate at that same natural frequency, and that's called resonance. Uh, some of you may have experienced this before. Um, I know I certainly have. If I've been at a stoplight with, with my car and someone else pulls up next to me and their, their radio or, or whatever, their music, is extremely loud, uh, it actually, their music will sometimes cause my windows to resonate with their music. The, the beat of their music actually causes my windows to vibrate in unison with their, with their songs that they're playing. So you may have experienced something similar to that where someone has really loud music and they pull up next to you and your car actually starts to resonate uh, with the, the other person's music going next to you. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to show you some examples of uh, resonance right now. The first one is two tuning forks and I'll, I'll let the guy in the video kind of explain what's going on here. Uh, but Basically these two tuning forks are the same frequency and he's going to strike one of the tuning forks put his hand on the tuning fork to make it stop vibrating and the other tuning fork actually continues to vibrate because they both have the same natural frequency they will actually cause each other to resonate so without further ado let's take a look at this video clip All right, and so that's basically what resonance is in a nutshell, is this idea that one object can force another object to start to vibrate because they both have the same natural frequency. Both of these tuning forks have the same, um, basically, frequency that they vibrate at, and so they could cause one another to start to actually move, even without actually physically touching one another. Some of you may have heard of this before. Basically, uh, people, um, in particular uh, opera singers were known for being able to basically cause glass to shatter with their voice and there was a Mythbusters actually about this like is it actually really possible for the human voice to cause glass to shatter um, and and how it really works is if you hit just the right pitch and that pitch matches the natural frequency of say a uh, wine goblet or whatever you can get the goblet to start vibrating so um, vigorously actually that it it shatters so let's take a look at this Mythbusters clip this clip is a little longer than the previous one so uh, hang on to your hats but here we go it's a musical high note you likely have never heard before and Jamie Vendera is using his talented voice to really break into music and last <laughs> night he was featured on the popular show Mythbusters trying to shatter another myth photojournalist Kenny Barnett has more It's not easy to do. I've had many people email the voice connection and say they've tried to do it. It is a crystal wine glass. You know, when you and rub your finger along the top, it's a good, expensive, big, heavy type glass. Now, it's to do with the resonation. You know, I get my voice to hit that exact pitch. And when the glass starts resonating and vibrating, like we you use your finger, you know, I build up that resonance. And if you're loud enough, boom, it'll blow up. <laughs> yeah! Is it supposed to be that easy? You have to be very pitch conscious, you know, like, like a tenor C sharp, which is a high note for Mel, and that's the one that I shattered, even though I've shattered ones a lot, a lot higher. It is what, it, it would be 550 hertz if you were measuring it in frequency. Now, the glasses aren't perfect pitch. singers, Adam and Jamie have gone for full power. The power of rock singer Jamie Vendera. Is it 
Jamie, have you heard the story that it's possible to break a wine glass with a human voice? Uh, actually, I have. Uh, one of my vocal teachers, uh, a man named Jim Gillette from a band called Nitro, uh, has done it for years uh, back in the 80s. So I know it can be done. try this one at home. That's nice, huh? Okay, pretty cool. Again, another example of basically resonance here where this uh, man's voice could cause a wine glass to basically start to vibrate at its natural frequency. It would vibrate so violently that it actually would shatter and break. Um, one last example of resonance here we have uh, an individual who's going to play basically a song on wine glasses so here we go <laughs> All right, so all just different examples of basically causing things to vibrate at their natural frequency through um, resonance. So all pretty neat. Um, let's take a look at our next slide, which is dealing with standing waves. <laughs> 